are you doing this evening, sir? Uh, been up late, got up early, but I get that extra energy that comes from this time of year. It's an uh, incredibly exciting time because players that you've been tracking sometimes for over a year, sometimes in a few cases, over two years, you get to see their development, what people think of them, where they might be headed, and frankly, though most of your work is done at this point, you always want to do that recheck. And that's what, this is recheck season and lying season if you're in the, actually in the league. But that this is an exciting time. This is what I, what I get excited about. Well, the, the fact that you say it's the, it's the season of rechecks bridges us perfectly to my, to my very first question for you. Uh, we just had the University of Texas Pro Day uh, go down in Austin, Texas. Uh, Mike Tomlin was there. He was one of the only head coaches there. It was most likely because he was there to see Kenny Vaccaro. And I, here in, in uh, Play the Draft, where we, where we trade players – throughout the draft season in order to build a portfolio and see who is the best draft nick out there come draft day. Right. right now, Kenny Vaccaro, he is trading at the number 16th overall spot in play the draft. So my question to you, Bill, what we're looking at here is what is what are his prospects, what is his draft stock going to do over this next three or four weeks that we have left prior to the draft? So, Bill, if you could shed some sure. light on – on, on how you feel about Kenny Vaccaro and where you think his stock is headed. Sure. Um, ironically enough, that's where I have him as well. I, I, was, I didn't know that's where they had him, but that's, that's about right. He is in the middle of the first round. Are there things that could push him up? Possibly. Um, it, it, it's not impossible that he go as early as nine, but I don't think he'll go that early. What helps him is that he's seen as the most complete, not maybe the best, safety prospect, but the most complete safety prospect. And by that, I mean, he doesn't have that one jump out at you, blow your mind thing that says, wow, I can't believe he did that. You know, I can't believe, you know, Matt Elam is a guy that makes more explosive plays in the running game. Like you see him blow up guys who outweigh him by 40 pounds. You don't see Bacaro do that. He's a good enough athlete, but he's not a guy that's a freak athletically. He's got better than average size. He's got almost perfect size for the position. That's probably the thing that, that you like. But Eric Reed's about the same size and much better pure athlete. So the thing that separates Vaccaro is you feel comfortable. He's a comfortable pick as a defensive coordinator. You know he knows how to play man. You know he knows how to do not just zone, but different types of zones. He can do quarter, quarter, half. He can be, he can patrol the deep middle. He can, he can do cover three. He can do all the things that you are likely to ask him to do and you've actually seen it and you, you've seen him do these things on tape. That gives you a little warm fuzzy when you and the scouts and everybody get together. It's like, okay, we have seen this. We have tape of him doing these things we're likely to ask him to do in our system. So even though there's, you can find four or five other guys that are better at him at one or two or three things, the thing that makes you feel good about him as a prospect is he doesn't have one single glaring weakness. He doesn't have that thing that you think, oh God, I don't know if he can do this. So I would say he's solid about right where he is. So do you, do you feel that – I mean, he's certainly ready to come in and be a starter from day one in the mm -hmm. NFL, correct? Yeah. Uh, once again, system is everything. There's things – there's teams where I think he would – especially teams that don't have much of the safety position, where he'd walk right in and start right away. I mean, there's teams – we all – what do we say every year about Dallas? Boy, if they just had safety play. I mean, he – he would, he's been the best safety in the state of Texas probably for a while, including the Cowboys. So, uh, well, I mean, and I guess that's changed now with Ed Reed coming to the Texans. But he's going to be, for a team like Dallas, or for teams that have had really poor safety play for a while, they're going to hand him the keys to the car of the back half of their defense right away. There are other teams where I think he might not, he might be able to play right away, but he wouldn't be the best guy right away. He would be learning he would be you know coming along like most rookies but there are teams where they have terrible safety play i mean if you're looking at sort of one thing that strikes you when you look at defenses around the nfl is the drop off between teams with good safety play and what their defense looks like and the teams with really poor safety play and if you have an amazing pass rush you could kind of hide that kind of thing for a while but all it takes is one big play for you to say oh right they don't have any safeties and Kenny Vaccaro is a guy, like I said, 
I, I don't like him as much as some people like him, but even though I'm somewhat critical, more critical than others, when you actually break him down on tape, you notice, okay, he understands all the concepts. He can drop down and cover the slot. He can play in the box. He can do the deep half. He can do, do the deep middle. I mean, he can do all the things you're going to ask him to do. You feel incredibly good about that. Is he the next Ed Reed? No. Is he the next, you know, banger? Is he the next guy who's going to be blowing people up? Is he going to be like Troy Polamalu? No. Um, he's more likely to be sort of like a bigger version of Ryan Clark, if you're looking for like a, a sort of more of a comparison, in that he's very solid in all areas, but unspectacular, in my mind at least, in, mo in most ways. So we are here on Play the Draft talking with Bill Carroll, uh, the head of Consensus Scouting Services. And Bill, what, what I hear that you're telling me is that Kenny Vaccaro is ready to play. Uh, he, he's, he's a product that's ready to go. But the depth in this draft uh, could potentially bring his value down a little bit because there are a slew – of other guys that you mentioned there that will be available later that are also appealing prospects. So, well, let me oh, throw go ahead, out, I was going to say, I'll just throw out a couple of guys. When people talk about sort of the Tri Palomalu, Bob Sanders type, a guy who is not quite the physical perfect prototype, he's not six feet tall, he's not 5'10 even, uh, but he's like a mini linebacker or almost like a mini D end in that he's a powerful guy, he can hold the edge runs like a scalded dog. You're looking at a guy like Shamarco Thomas from Syracuse, who is an explosive, powerful athlete, who is as strong as a linebacker, stronger than a lot of linebackers in this draft, in fact, and is able to do certain things. Now, where you don't feel as good about him is, okay, can he cover the deep middle? Mm, you aren't sure. That's why Vaccaro is, is higher than a guy like Shamarco. Shamarco is better athlete, stronger, faster, all these kinds, more explosive but you haven't seen him do all the things you're going to likely ask your safeties to do. Is he completely able to play both free and strong? You're not sure. Vaccaro, you've seen him do things that show you in most systems, a lot of, a lot of teams ask their safeties to be able to do both. And so you don't know that about some of the safeties. Cyprian is a guy that some people feel that way about as well. So that's another guy I was going to bring up. When people say, well, who might jump over him? The only person I think is a legitimate shot to catch him and I don't think it's going to happen, but I think you know the gap might narrow slightly, is Jonathan Cyprian. Well, and Jonathan Cyprian is a guy that I, I currently have in my portfolio. He's actually ranked as number 33 overall. So the reason I own him is I'm, I'm with you on that, Bill. I think he only has room to go up. But what I'm hearing is with, with Kenny Vaccaro, what kind of counterbalances the depth and safety in this draft? The fact that he's very versatile and that he's a product that's ready to play right away. Now, I'm kind of with you that I do believe he ha he can go as high as nine to the Jets. That's why I think he's an appealing uh, equity to put into my portfolio here. 